Ian took Madison's hand in his and turned to face the witness. He was a highly regarded older man who was a close friend of the Weston family. He had white hair and a hearty smile. He spoke softly as he initiated the ceremony, and his voice made Madison's heart quiver. He stepped aside and was replaced by the officiant, who would be having them repeat their vows. To Madison's surprise, it was Daniel Weston. This detail was so touching that she could feel her heart tremble. He said, On your wedding day, you exchanged wedding rings as a symbol of your love and vowed to spend your lives together as husband and wife. Now, before your family and friends, I ask you to renew your vows and reaffirm your marriage. They recited their vows to each other. Then Daniel turned to Madison and asked, Madison Weston, born Greenwald, do you take Ian Weston as your husband, continuing the bond between you? She looked into Ian's eyes and said, I do. The people in the audience caught their breath at the beauty of the moment, and she truly believed that this would be the most perfect and unforgettable ceremony. However, this belief was only seconds away from being shattered. Daniel winked at Madison, who caught his eye and smiled. Then he turned to Ian and asked, Ian Weston, do you take Madison Weston, born Greenwald, as your wife, continuing the bond between you? Madison looked at the imposing man by her side. She watched his lips, waiting to hear his answer with a sweet feeling in her chest. When he opened his mouth to speak, she could feel herself heating up and blushing. I... he started, but he was suddenly interrupted. Ian? A woman's voice sounded out and Madison thought she recognized it from before. Her smile didn't even have time to drop before the voice continued. Ian, you promised you would marry me, the woman shouted. Just like that, the crowd broke out in whispers. Madison turned away from her husband to see who had spoken, and discovered that the prima ballerina herself was standing at the end of the carpet. Her hand froze. She didn't say anything. She only turned her head toward Ian stiffly, waiting for his reaction. Ian kept his back to Claire the entire time, and he was so quiet that it was scary. She wondered how it was possible that the sunlight that had been warming her skin through the windows only moments ago suddenly felt so cold. She could feel the chill all over her body. Claire was dressed in black, her pale skin delicate in contrast. With her beauty and temperament, the sight of her so upset was pitiful. She walked forward step by step, tears rolling down her cheeks. Softly she said, You told me you wanted to marry me. Who is this standing beside you now? Madison didn't want to back down, but she could feel herself doing just that. She knew that Ian didn't carry her in his heart, and her ceremony was now being stolen from her before her very eyes. She had hoped that they could have a year together, or perhaps more if they were lucky, to prepare her for the future. She would never have thought that Claire would turn up like this. The entire venue was now silent, and no one dared to move. Madison was falling into a panic. She looked around at Ian and Claire, and then at all the guests, helpless and flustered. She didn't know what to do. Claire drew in closer, and Madison was afraid that she would come up to them and snatch Ian away just like that. She was scared of what this would mean for her. Tears began to well up in her eyes. The audience watched her step back in pain with mixed feelings. She wanted to grab Ian and pull him away, but he just stood there without saying anything or even moving. She staggered as she subconsciously tried to put distance between herself and the incoming Claire, and her hand fell away from his. She felt like her heart had fallen into a bottomless abyss. Daniel steadied her and looked over at Ian with a frown. However, Ian didn't seem to notice this at all. Madison pursed her lips tightly. The moment her hand had been separated from Ian's, she had felt herself become strong. His family had kept this from her, and now someone had come in and ruined her ceremony. She couldn't have time to back off or be timid. She stood up straight and took a step away from Ian. She looked at him with a stubborn look in her eyes, waiting for him to make a choice. Claire was approaching Ian with teary eyes, mumbling something about the past. 
Suddenly, she was blocked by two figures as Allie and Zack came to stand in front of her. Please behave yourself, Allie told her, glaring at the woman. Zack stood over Claire, blocking her view of Ian. He didn't say anything to her, but his warning was obvious. He wouldn't allow her to destroy his sister's happiness in any way. Everyone waited quietly to see how things would play out. They didn't even dare breathe too loudly in the piercing silence. Claire looked at the people in front of her and said, Do you know that I'm Ian's girlfriend? I am Claire Thompson, and there's an engagement agreement between the Thompsons and the Westons. Suddenly, the audience began whispering again. The only people who seemed happy about this revelation were the Greenwalds. Some people turned to Stella to ask her about Madison, and she happily told them her opinion. All around, people were talking. She still insisted on marrying him even though she knew he was engaged. What's wrong with her? Someone commented. This is shocking. I wouldn't have expected this from her. Another one remarked. Why did the Westons agree to this? A third added. I don't know, but it's hard to believe they will continue accepting her after this scandal, somebody stated. What a horrible woman. Stealing someone's fiancé like that, another guest commented. No good woman wants to be a mistress. The guest kept whispering things against the bride. Madison heard the words being said, but she didn't step down. She looked at the Westons before the stage. Diana turned her eyes away, and Olivia and Edward lowered their heads a little. Suddenly, Madison smiled. It was evidently no use that the family liked her, and that Diana always protected her. This was all taken away the moment it affected the family's reputation. All she would have needed was for someone from their family to stand up for her. However, this would offend the Thompsons and damage the Westons' reputation. She couldn't count on them doing anything to help her out. Stella took this moment to say out loud, I warned her, but she was so adamant. How horrible. I understand that Miss Thompson has come to fight for her love. This practically confirmed the picture of Madison forcing herself into the Weston family. Immediately, the people's opinions of her were sealed. Madison suddenly felt herself becoming extremely bitter. She lowered her eyes with a self-deprecating smile before looking back up at the man in front of her. She was being misunderstood by everyone, and at this moment, she needed to hear his answer. However, she didn't have the courage to ask him which one of them he truly wanted to have as a wife. Allie was shocked, but she still forced herself to say, Miss Thompson, according to what you said, the Weston and Thompson families both knew about your engagement. But then why is the ceremony being held by the Westons, and why is it so large? Why didn't the Thompsons object to the marriage? Either you are lying, or your engagement had ended. She turned around and walked over to Madison. She had been full of surprise when she had found out that Madison's husband was actually Ian Weston, and she wished her all the best. She didn't deserve this. Coldly, Zack said, It doesn't matter whether you're telling the truth or not. You're implying that the two families didn't know about this wedding. Perhaps you shouldn't be so quick to make assumptions. Although your father couldn't attend the wedding today, he sent a gift. Do you know what that means? Her face paled, and her entire body seemed to be on the verge of collapsing. Others looked at her with pity in their eyes. Zack continued, his voice terrifyingly cold. This means that your family knew about this from the beginning, and they were willing to see it happen. The people were listening to him speak. They had forgotten that Madison had someone so strong backing her up. You're not the only Thompson daughter. And Ian is not the only man in the Weston family. You shouldn't jump to conclusions. Be careful, or I will take you to court. Today is an important day for my sister. I hope you respect that, Zack threatened. Madison's heart filled with warmth, but she knew that, no matter what they said, if Ian didn't speak, nothing would be resolved. Everyone else knew this, too, and they were now watching him intently waiting for him to decide.